Hello everyone and welcome to Wedding Videography for Beginners. I am your host Phil Beavout and today we are reviewing the Tascam Porta Capture X8. If you are new to the channel, thank you so much for watching. I'm a wedding cinematographer in New England and our YouTube channel focuses on training and reviews for all things wedding related. I was super stoked to get the Porta Capture X8 as it's an upgrade from our Zoom H6. Uh, just a quick note, I did pay for this through B&H and this video is not sponsored and no one is approving or seeing this before I upload it. One day I might be cool enough for something like that, but but not today. The biggest things in my opinion to talk about are the 32-bit float recording, the auto gain, audio interface, and combo quarter inch XLR inputs. I was really looking for a recorder that could pretty much hit record and walk away from, and this does that for a, a really reasonable price. The device takes micro SD cards, I did have an issue with my 64 gig card, but it might be the card. My 32 gig worked just fine. Uh, and I can record for around seven hours before filling it up, which is way more than what we actually need it for. Like many newer electronic devices, the Porta Capture takes alkaline batteries, rechargeable batteries, etc. Just to be sure to switch the battery type and the settings to the one that you're using. It also takes USB-C power from a power bank, which is how we typically use it. I have 6,000 milliamp GoPro battery that I use. With the regular alkaline batteries, Tascam states that you can get around 11 hours of runtime with no phantom power. And with our battery pack, it'll probably last a few days. This is a touch screen and it's pretty responsive. It's snappy. It works well. I heard some people talking about the backlight bleeding, but I updated mine before I even noticed it. And when it comes to size, it's pretty similar to the Zoom H6 and it definitely has some weight to it. It doesn't feel cheap or anything like that. Now, this is a six channel recorder, which is impressive for podcasting, music recording, and things like that. It has several defaults for quick recording, like podcast, vocals, ASMR, etc. I did notice when I was recording in vocals or the podcast, the audio didn't sound as good as when it did in manual mode. Now, that could be user error on my part, but manual has been by far the, the best choice for recording. In fact, that is what you are listening to right now. I am recording this into track five of the recorder with phantom power on, and it is not connected to the laptop because I'd have cords everywhere. Otherwise, I'd have it jacked in right now. I'm really excited about the audio interface. You can use the USB-C port on the side uh, and connect directly into your computer. When I fired up RX-8, it recognized the Porta Capture without me installing or doing anything special. So for recording vocals, podcasts, things like that, you can go straight into your computer, which is awesome for people like me. And as soon as you're done recording, you can edit the file with just a couple of clicks. Now, I did get a chance to use this at a corporate event and film a couple of podcast episodes with it. And it's so simple to use. I connected it to the monitor route of the DJ's soundboard. I hit record and just simply walked away from it. It's so nice not having to focus on it, just to have it set to auto gain at 32-bit float, 4,800 kilohertz, and then boom, you're done. That's it. Uh, I did notice that it creates two files, one track and one master. The way I understand it, if you're recording multiple tracks, they will each have a recording, and one file will be all of them joined together as a master. Uh, that took me a minute to figure out because I wasn't ready to see so many files in the folder, including .bin files, which I also thought was different. One random thing I was watching about the recorder was someone who said they couldn't plug in a 3.5 millimeter mic like a LAV, but if you look at the top, the two left-right stereo mics can be removed, and you can use the jacks on top with just a regular LAV mic. Mike. I tested this with our COS 11D and it worked just fine. I do want to remind everyone that while this does have 32-bit float, you'll always be limited by the range of the microphones that are being used. This does provide buffer, but just be forewarned that whatever mic is plugged into it is going gonna, gonna to limit what you can record. With all that being said, I would not be doing a good review if I did not mention the new Zoom F3. Uh, it does look like it has two inputs that are XLR only, but also has auto gain and 32-bit float. I'm not too sure on the price yet, but it does look like a really good option too. I'm just sold on the audio interface with the X8. It, that's been amazing so far. 
Now, with all that being said, I'm a really big fan of the Tascam Porta Capture X8. I think it's going to make my day and workflow significantly easier. I'm a big proponent of plug and play. So I can be off thinking about other things rather than running back and forth and trying to fix audio. So I would definitely recommend this. One quick thing that I would like to point out is that I did use this on a Zoom call as well. So I used my podcast microphone connected into the Porta Capture X8, which was connected to my laptop and I used my podcast microphone rather than using my headphones or something like that and actually worked really well. So that, that's definitely an option with that audio interface. So if you like this, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Join our private Facebook group, Wedding Videography for Beginners. Uh, we sincerely hope that everybody is staying safe and healthy and we will talk to everybody here in a couple of weeks. All right, 